In this video we're going to look at data collected from a silicon wafer with a thin film of oxide and the idea is to make use of a Shirley background to try and understand the type of changes that you might expect when you have a combination of materials the silicon oxide is expected to be an insulator and the silicon is a semiconductor so we would expect there to be a rise in the background as a result of the silicon but we'd also expect that under the oxide peaks the background should be flat. The assertion that these oxide peaks should sit on a flat background can be supported if we look at data from a thick film of oxide on silicon. In this case the film is so thick that there's no evidence of the elemental peaks. So we end up with a pair of peaks representing the oxide and the background in this case is a constant background. The residual is about what we'd expect for the type of data that we're looking at and the line shapes that we used here so a value of 1 is about correct and these have been fitted simply using a flat background so this supports the assertion that beneath the oxide peaks the background should be flat. If next we consider a thin film measurement you can now see that a flat background does not accommodate the type of shapes that we see in these data. So let's experiment with these data and take a copy. Here are the data. I'll take one more copy. So I've got two VAMAS blocks that are identical and I will add a background to these data. So this is a Shirley background. Let's just do the same, propagate this one and we'll make this instead of a Shirley a min limits background and then if we do a comparison we can see the influence of a Shirley background compared to a simple flat background. Well the Shirley background introduces a rise here that is beneath these elemental peaks so this is in line with what we might expect but what it also does is it introduces a rise beneath the oxide and this is not what we would expect if I reverse these you can see that this is the type of flat background that we would expect here and we need the Shirley background to rise up and perhaps join this somewhere around here so there's clearly a problem if we either choose a, a Shirley background to represent these or attempt to use a flat background beneath both of these peaks. Neither of these will work particularly well and we would really like to have a combination of both. The problem that is introduced by a Shirley background is related to how it's calculated and it's calculated on the basis of this signal and this includes both the elemental signal and this oxide signal. So if we did not include the oxide signal in the Shirley calculation then we would observe a rise and then it would become flat. We can see this if we look at the calculation for a Shirley. This is the basis for a calculation. It's the area this A2 area that is calculated and used to scale these intensities I1 and I2 as you go across an interval. So all of these data and in our case we had silicon both oxide and elemental all would be included in this Shirley calculation. If rather than using the data we fit these data with a set of peaks then in principle the area calculation that is performed based on the data could be equally applied to each individual component. So in our case we have silicon in elemental state and silicon in oxide but we only want to apply a Shirley calculation to peaks that correspond to the silicon elemental form. So the area that's important to these Shirley calculations can be described in terms of this integral here of a component peak. So if we calculate an individual Shirley component based on an individual component within a peak model we don't have to apply the same lift in the background to the oxide peaks as we do for the elemental peaks. We can now apply this principle of calculating a Shirley background based on individual components 
to the thin film silicon oxide. And here's an example of the normal takeoff angle. And so we have a relatively small oxide peak to the elemental peaks. These are modeled using two components in each case. So these are doublet peaks. And the critical difference is that we have introduced two component shapes that are fitted as part of this optimization that are calculated from the elemental peaks. So this yellow one corresponds to the first of these, the red peak in the elemental doublet, and the second one is the green peak. And these are both integrated from the same line shapes that are used to fit the data under the elemental peak. So we can see this in more detail in terms of a Shirley background if we introduce some of the display options on the color property page we can say color components using the component index now this is a value that is assigned to each of the components in a peak model and this peak model includes component indices for each of these component peaks as 0, 1, 2, 3 apart from these background peaks these are both set to minus 1 and these have a special meaning that if we display components as background, any shape that is assigned a component index of minus 1 will appear as a background to these other peaks. So when I press apply, we can see that we have elemental peaks, then a rising background, and then flat beneath the oxide. So this offset of this background that is calculated from these elemental peaks is offset to model a semiconductor behavior and beneath the oxide peak these represent a flat background which is consistent with a thick oxide film looking at the same oxide peak. The definition of the background components within this peak model are based on the line shape that has been used to model the asymmetry within these elemental peaks and then the same line shape is presented here so this prefix indicates that the line shape that follows should be integrated to form a shape which can then be fitted as part of this exercise you can also see there's a constraint here that has been introduced to produce an offset for this step in the background that is associated with the component in column A and the component in column A is this peak here. So you can see that there is a means of introducing the concept of a semiconductor rather than a metal for this rise in the Shirley background. So there's a reasonable amount of flexibility in creating a peak model that will then fit these data. It's almost at the point where you're fitting noise this is consistent with a multiple detector system, but nevertheless, it's a really remarkable fit to these data.